This is the history about Huta Stolowa Wola, a Polish industrial and arms manufacturing facilities established as part of the central industrial district to the northwest of the town of Nisko, near the village of Plawo, which is now known as Stolowa Wola. In the 1930s and 1940s, this complex played a pivotal role in the industrialization and armaments production in Poland and during the World War II. The facility's origins can be traced back to March 1937, when construction began from scratch under the banner of the Central Industrial District and was named Zakladi Polodniowa. In the archives of the city Stolowa Wola, it is stated, in 1937, in the area of the Puszcza Sandomierska at that time, the location for the Zakladi Poludnio Southern Works was chosen on the grounds of the royal village of Plawo. The first pines were cut down and the area was prepared for construction. Even before the outbreak of World War II, facilities such as a steel mill, press shop and mechanical workshops were already established. At the time, the plant produced high-quality steel, weaponry, artillery and agricultural equipment and machinery. Efforts were also made to obtain a Swedish license for the production of modern steam turbines. Now, here's a key insight about the driving force behind the construction of these cutting-edge facilities and the entire city. The mastermind behind this meticulously planned and remarkably executed endeavor was none other than Deputy Prime Minister for Economic Affairs, engineer Eugenius Kwiatkowski. It was his visionary leadership that played a pivotal role in the establishment of the Central Industrial District, known as Central Ni Okreg Przemysłowy, making it all possible. The speed of progress during this time was nothing short of astonishing. In March 1937, construction work commenced, and by December, most of the iron structures had already taken shape. And on September 5, 1938, the first noble steel was successfully smelted in an induction furnace. Just a few months later, on April 7, 1939, the inaugural artillery piece resounded across the company's firing range, marking a significant milestone. Fast forward to June 14, 1939, in Stalowa Wola, the solemn inauguration was performed by the President of the Republic of Poland, Ignacy Moskiki, who privately was a professor of chemical engineering, also the initiator of this project Prime Minister for Economic Affairs. Engineer Eugeniusz Kwiatkowski attended. He also initiated the construction of the port and city of Gdynia. This event was a moment of immense pride for the Central Industrial District. The period between the symbolic cutting of the first pine tree and the official opening closed with a total of 625 working days, or 26 months and 26 days. What emerged was one of the largest and most advanced steelworks on the entire European continent, providing gainful employment for approximately 3,500 individuals. As this remarkable steelworks took shape, the first pre-factory housing estates began to emerge, signifying the birth of a new steel city. By January 1939, this burgeoning urban center was officially christened as Stalowa Wola. The forge was finished in 285 days, the rolling mill in 400 days, the tool shop in 215 days, and the gymnasium and public school in 130 days. However, the outbreak of World War II disrupted these plans. During the German occupation in 1939, the facility was taken over by the Germans and incorporated into the Reichswerke Hermann Göring conglomerate under the name Stahlwerke Braunschweigwerk Stalowa Wola. The outbreak of the World War II and the subsequent Nazi occupation dealt a severe blow to the ambitious plans of the plant. The war abruptly halted the breathtaking pace of growth in both the settlement and the industry. During the occupation from 1939 to 1944, a forced labor camp for Jews from Poland and other countries operated here. Approximately 2,000 prisoners toiled in the camp, and tragically the majority of them met a cruel fate. It became a center for manufacturing anti-aircraft guns, aircraft bomb components, artillery shells, rapid-fire anti-aircraft guns, and periscopes for submarines. Towards the end of the war, they also refurbished captured Soviet artillery pieces. The industrial facilities were commandeered to produce artillery equipment and other armaments for the German war machine. However, within the boundaries of Stalowa Wola, a resistance movement emerged. 
They carried out intelligence operations, acts of sabotage, and the elimination of collaborators. Many residents who participated in the resistance paid the ultimate price with their lives or health. Just before their retreat, the departing Nazis initiated a campaign of looting and devastation within the factory, stripping away most of the machinery. After World War II, when the region was liberated by the Red Army in July 1944, Zakladi Poludniowe had become the largest heavy industry plant in the reclaimed part of Poland. However, the facility had suffered significant damage and looting during the occupation and had to be rebuilt. On March 20, 1948, Zakladi Poludniowe was renamed as the state enterprise Huta Stalowa Wola. Post-war, the facility expanded into the production of various heavy machinery, including construction equipment and heavy tractors. It also continued its arms manufacturing, primarily producing artillery and howitzers on Soviet licenses, ranging from 122 mm to 100 mm. Notably, Huta Stalowa Wola played a significant role in the production of 100 mm D-10T tank guns used in T-54, T-55 family tanks. Alongside traditional artillery, they also ventured into rocket production, manufacturing 140 mm WP-8Z and maritime WM-18 launchers. Despite the challenges and disruptions brought about by the war, Huta Stalowa Wola stood as a symbol of industrial resilience and adaptability in the face of adversity. Join us for our next episode as we explore Huta Stalowa Wola's post-war journey and its enduring impact on Poland's industrial landscape.